because I've been in that situation so many times where um, a friend of mine, a white friend of mine, is is uh, having big feelings about uh, something racist that they did, and and I have to uh, somehow uh, alleviate their guilt rather than focus on the ways that I'm hurt. You know, I've been in that position, like specifically through my adolescence. You know, racial confession. Racial yeah, confession? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like oh, like you're the priest yeah, in there? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. god, yes. yes. The movie's called The American Society of Magical Negroes. Um, and it starts with the magical Negro trope, which is a, a, a black supporting character who doesn't have his own internal life, is just there to support the white protagonist. And uh, our movie is a satire of that trope. Uh, but it's also um, uh, not just a sort of takedown of this racist trope. It's also a way for me as a writer director to explore um, uh, some particular defense mechanisms I was taught in response to racism. And it's also, I, I think, a very full hearted love story about being um, seen by someone who loves you and how nourishing that is in a culture that would rather reduce you and see you as a stereotype. Did you have any particularly egregious examples of that in pop culture that you were thinking about? when you made this yeah i mean there's there's a couple there's certainly some some stuff we you know reference in the film mm -hmm. you know but you would you know you you know them you all know them you know and it's an old trope as long as there have been white people writing there has been this trope but you know in in america anyway and and one of the things i say about it is that it's a it's a, it's a happy slave trope is what it is right so it's a trope that imagines that but that where a white person likes to imagine that black people just love putting them first and just love fitting ourselves into um, uh, existing white systems of power. And um, uh, that's not true. <laughs> but funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, what I, all the like very rich political stuff I said, but, but funny, you know, but imagine David Allen Greer saying it instead of, <laughs> <laughs> instead of a, a, a writer director. Part of the, the, the whole um, exercise is making this subject matter that's really difficult to talk about uh, uh, possible to talk about. So part of that is humor, but also it's it's fun. It's the fun of a magical world. And and beyond that, it's it's a bit of a metaphor because the the things black people have to do to survive in America are utterly fantastical. And there's no better way to express that than by creating a, a literally fantastical world that is a reflection of again the wild and unbelievable lengths we have to go to to navigate this place. David and Justice, when you guys read the script for the first time, was there one particular, because you write a lot of examples that have like, seemed like they could be exaggerated, but they're mm -hmm. not. Did anything from the script, like one particular scene or moment or interaction pop for you right away, your post I'm a, strongest? I'm bone dry. You want to take this? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I was just in awe that like my my personal racial experience was captured so uh, accurately and 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 beautifully and and with humor and and light, but with just as much weight. Um, and that's obviously because you know m me and Kobe have a, have a very similar mode of moving um, through the world. Uh, but I remember specifically the scene at the bar. Um, between um, Aaron, say it, say it. <laughs> between Aaron, Lizzie, and, and Jason. Good. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been in that situation so many times, where um, a friend of mine, a white friend of mine, is is uh, having big feelings about uh, something racist that they did, and and I have to uh, somehow uh, alleviate their guilt rather than focus on the ways that I'm hurt you know i've been in that position like specifically through my adolescence you know racial confession a racial yeah, confession yeah yeah yeah. It's like, oh you like you're had... the priest yeah, the they, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. god yes yeah, that's have great. you ever that's had great. a friend yeah. who's gone to aa and they're going through their steps and, <laughs> and they call you up and, oh i won't apologize about three years like we're good man yeah <laughs> well, three years ago but i puked and i ate it um i just want to be like I, I, yeah let's move on man. yeah fully the film is so much about who who's the main character right who gets to be central and who gets to be in the background and obviously it's da it's, it's, it's david yeah. you know as as he's made very clear you know? thank you yeah. uh, finally a film centering on the travails of an older <laughs> very naturally sexy <laughs> black man <laughs>
but, but what David and, and Justice are both speaking to in terms of that confessional quality, I think one way that white people can can center themselves in conversations about race is is they make it they ask us as black people to make them feel okay and take away their guilt and and absolve them of, their, of different things as opposed to again just listening to us in our experience. I have a serious yeah. question: Have you ever been in that conversation? And inside, you know that this person, they have fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you choose to go, no, nah, we're good, man. Yeah. Cause because yeah, yeah, because yeah, if you yeah. say anything else, yes. you're going to be there for two. Pick and choose your battles. I'm going to give yeah, you an example. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was on a plane sitting in first class. It was not full. <clears throat> so there was an older white man sitting next to me, total stranger. And uh, right after we took off, the stewardess says, well, you can move around if you want to. So he left and went and sat somewhere else. About an hour into the flight, he came back, obviously inebriated, to apologize for moving away. I do not know this man. <laughs> he came back a second time, even drunker. I know what you think. You think you're calling me racist. That's and I amazing. just was like, whoa. This went on for the whole flight. Oh my God. Like, it, it wasn't even about me. Yeah. It's, I'm it's a stranger. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was all about him confessing yeah. Yeah. his uh, racial. And, and this is one of the things I want to tell you guys. See, I'm stuck right now. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to make up a word. <laughs> <laughs> he kept, it's like he wanted to regurgitate his ineptiosity. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Mm. But what no, I but for real. No, he came and you, and it got more animated and more. He was arguing with himself. Yes. Right, right, right. right. Like, I know what own, you mean. I know what you're conscious. thinking. Yeah. You're so yeah. silent, saying, I'm a racist. That's what you. Yeah. I don't yeah. Yeah. It didn't get combative. It was mildly combative until finally I acted like I was asleep. I mean, it's been long. <laughs> I'm telling you, this really happened. I'm like, yeah, 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 this yeah, yeah, this yeah. was all him. Yeah, yeah. It was, we never, I think we said hello. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and so that was probably, for me, the worst, where yeah. you just, oh my God. Yeah. It's so funny because as, as black audiences, as any marginalized person can attest to, we've had to find ourselves in uh, white stories. We've had to find white characters that we identify with mm -hmm. for so long. And then now that we are centering ourselves in these stories, white audiences for the first time ever are being like, oh, like, I, like now I have to find myself, even though no one in this looks like me, yeah. you know, I have to like, I really identify with this protagonist. And, um, but that's where empathy comes from. You know, that's where, that's where yeah. actual movement comes from. And it's, you know, with this piece, I think it's, it's actually a terrifically universal piece because it's, it's really just, it's the story of a, a guy who has trouble speaking up for himself, who learns how to speak up for himself, you know? And I think that independent of the sort of racialized um, sort of generation of that for, for, for myself and for the, the character that the justice plays, I, I think that's something a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds can connect with. But yeah, but I think sometimes people look at a, a piece that's, that's labeled with race or has race associated with it. And um, when, you know, white people, I mean, have, and, and worry whether or not they'll be able to connect to it. But I think all, all, all stories are universal. Mm -hmm. The more specific they are, the more universal they are.